welcome everyone to the second deal analysis night where we're going to analyze deals from start to finish. My name is Bo Manor and I'm joined tonight with my business partner, Chris Goff, and we are the co-founders of REI Pro. Now, I can't begin to tell you how many people either emailed, chatted in, or even took the time to call our office and let us know just how much they enjoyed the last time we did this deal analysis night. People were just so amazed at how much they learned simply by listening to us analyze these deals so that you can know what you can or even really can't do with a deal, even though it wasn't even something that they had going on. We had people tell us that if they'd only listened to this just a few weeks before, they would have missed out on one or even more opportunities and they just had to pass on it because they didn't know what to do. And they just had those light bulb moments go off in their head as they're listening to us analyze these deals. So, you know, guys, I want to ask you to help us out. Help us spread the word about what we're doing here at REI Pro. Please like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and even post on your own social media channels that everyone needs to get involved with REI Pro. You know, they need to join the best software and the best educational system out there. Now I'm gonna bring on Chris Goff here in just a few minutes, we're gonna get started. But first, let me just get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. And that is the disclaimer. I'm not gonna read this word for word, but basically it just says that REI Pro, Chris Goff and Bo Manry, we are not responsible for and shall have no liability in any of your business's success or failures or anything else that you're gonna to do to rely on this information that we're gonna bring you tonight. You know, REI Pro, myself, Chris, we do not render legal accounting or investment or tax advice. You need to seek your own professional advisors in these transactions that you guys are doing. You need to have these part of your power team. <clears throat> We're making no promises, no guarantees that anything we teach you tonight is gonna make you money and you're gonna benefit and become wealthy or anything like that. But we are gonna bring you education tonight. We are gonna go through these deals step by step and we're gonna teach you a lot of great stuff. So uh, Samantha, if you are on, let's see. Um, if I can find Samantha. Samantha is on, I'm gonna allow you to talk, Samantha. Um, so this is 8905. North Oakland Court. And this property is a recently expired listing. There's an existing mortgage balance of 430,000. <clears> the home has Kitek piping and needs to be replaced. That's gonna be a cost of about $30,000, which is why the owners had a hard time selling it. The pipes were also leaking. Owners do not want to manage the renovations and they want to be done with the property. The asking price is 680,000, but is negotiable. Currently renting the home for $3,000 per month to family. There's a mortgage balance of the 430,000, calculated an ARV of 750,000. So this house is stunning. You know, I pulled this house out. This is a nice house. It is. And what it, to me, what it sounds like is they don't have the cash to do it. They'd rather sell the property and maybe take it out of closing because the inspector's probably going to nail them on this and it's going to need to be fixed or negotiated um, in the price. Is, it, is that kind of the feeling you're getting, Samantha? That is the feeling I'm getting, getting um, although that's what I'm inferring, although the um, owner of the home, um, she, she continues to reference that, you know, they do have the money, they're well off, it's not a big deal, but I'm getting the sense that it is an issue. They, they, they always say that. They're not, that's yeah. the funny thing, people, sellers don't go, I'm broke, you just need to steal this house from me, right? So, <laughs> I mean, common sense is just gonna say, I mean, this is a nice house. Yeah. Right, so common sense is just gonna tell you that, I mean, it's gonna get nailed by the inspector. If they're selling it to a buyer, they're gonna get nailed. They're gonna give some credit. They're gonna have to do something. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just assume that we need to replace uh, those pipes, it's gonna be 30 grand. Other than that, I mean, outside of maybe some very basic minor stuff, the pictures showed very well on the property. Yeah, so, the 30000 is an estimate that um, the homeowners, I guess, got when they solicited for bids to see what it would cost. Okay, if they have a copy of that, I would, 
I would ask for a copy of that. Okay. Um, I always say you never actually trust one person, yeah. you know, that way, if you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So this one's going to be cool to go through. Okay. So I'm going to go through step number four. I actually agree with you on the comps. That's, I, I almost came dead out at 750. I just went ahead and round it just for simplicity. I've already put in the 30,000 and it could be a little bit more, you know, when you add up anything else, uh, but let's just keep it at that 30. Um, acquisition, this is just assuming that, hey, I'm going to pay the seller in one lump sum, okay? And if I go down and if I wholesale it, I just put in a 7,500, um, put in a retail's profit, actually lowered it. 15% is always a general rule of thumb I use, but again, depending on the price of the home and so forth, um, I knocked it down to 12.5. My point being is that that's going to put us at 593 on the house. Now, every time I go through a deal, and I want everybody to know this, I always say, can I wholesale it? Can I buy it cheap and sell it cheap? Could I retail it? Could I buy it cheap, fix it up, sell it, rent it, do something with it? Could I lease option the property? Could I sell or finance the property? So I'm always asking myself um, these questions. So as you can see, um, you know, where, where this all cash offer is going to have to be. Now that may not be very appealing, right? Because they're wanting what, 680 for the property? Yes. And that's fine if you sell it to a qualified buyer, right? Because they're going to go in, they negotiate the 680, the 30,000, the pipe replacement. But when you sell it to an investor, it's just a different ball game because of the time expenses and so forth. So that's one option. And then I'm going to go to the next option, which is a lease option. Okay. So I'm going to give you the offer that I came up with. So I went with 670, which is just under their asking price. I'm pretty confident they'd take this 670 number. Mm -hmm. um, they already said they're negotiable, which means please make an offer because they're frustrated. They've already had it listed. It's already expired. Now they're going through this process. They really need to get rid of the house. The problem before, probably why it expired, is you're going to scare away a lot of buyers. And that's why I think it's very important that we introduce some new ideas to the owner. Um, the only thing that concerns me with this lease option is the amount of money that's going to need to be um, calculated to fix those payment or those pipes. Um, that's what I was considering as well. Especially if it's currently leaking, um, that would be a concern. Now, yes, there's ways around that. We could actually use the buyer's down payment. Now we'd have to get a pretty large down payment. You're gonna need at least 30 and then something that's gonna make you happy. So um, that's one idea. Um, I'm gonna give you another idea and then I'm gonna analyze them. Okay, so you could go in and potentially sell or finance this. This might be a great strategy. It may be something that they're not thinking of. The simple fact that they're renting the place to family, they're already willing to accept a monthly payment. It sounds like I just don't want to deal with it. It's a headache to us. Um, we'd rather just get rid of it. So this could be another possibility um, is a seller finance. Here's just some of the terms. Um, I am going to give them some uh, money down just because it's strength of offer. If the only thing that needs to be fixed in here are the pipes, everything else looks great. So have you seen the house? I have not. I've just seen the pictures. You definitely, if, if they're open to one of these ideas, you definitely need to go look at it. Yeah, um, for sure. Let me show you, I think I saved a couple of analysis. I'm going to give you... If you sell or finance this, basically with those numbers here, you could see that'd be the ARV. Um, if you actually took the same numbers here, and there's going to be some other costs, closing costs um, and expenses, just the simple fact that you'd be buying it. But if I turned around and actually sold it, if I could get that 35 number down, 
we think about 10% of $750,000 house is 75 grand already. And this is considered a jumbo loan. So you're going to have to put 20% down, most likely. In some okay. cases you can get cheaper. If I could get somebody at 35 and you seller financed it, at least that would help cover some of the costs that you would need to put back in there. So it's not a huge money maker up front, mm -hmm. but it helps cut the cost of those pipes. And then I pulled the rental rate on that property, um, just going based on um, Zillow. They're one of the better ones out there. If you did this on a lease option um, for 12 months, you can see that particular profit. Now, at the end of the day, you can't really take all of that because you're going to take 30,000 of that profit to go back and fix the pipe. So you'd have to subtract 30 from that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we actually did a lease option, lease option, again, my only concern is the amount of money to get down on this. But, you know, if they would take this number, at 670, 2,500 down, keep it, why 2,500 down? Because it needs 30,000 in repairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you're not buying it. Seller finance, I could put a little bit more down because I'm actually buying it from them. This is more of I'm just leasing it with the option to buy. Monthly payment of 3,000, I threw that out there because that's what they're willing to accept with their family. I would always try to go long-term, you know, 24 months would be fine too. Um, then I'm going to turn around and sell this property. Again, you're going to use part of this down payment to fix the problem. So it's not a huge money maker again, but you're going to get the cash flow on this property. When you add up all that, that's a hundred thousand minus the 30,000 you're going to have to put back into the property or the buyer is going to have to put back into the property um, to get that fixed. It's, as you can see, it's going to be a more profitable way of doing the deal. And the simple reason is, is that if I seller finance it, I'm going to have closing costs, expenses, liability, um, all kinds of things. If you control the property with a lease option and then sell it that way, it's going to be a little bit more profitable to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And I think the owner would be more open to this because it's only it's going to be a shorter time frame than if I sell or financed it. Mm -hmm. So kind of wrap it all up here. The cash offer is probably too low for them to take. Now they still could take it based on what they owe on it and so forth. They could actually take that $500,000 number that I threw out there. Mm -hmm. Or we can propose a couple of other strategies, which I would throw both out. And I always like to try to get the seller to feel like they have to choose one or the other. That, that to me, it almost, they almost feel like they have to pick one because think about it. They already know that it hasn't sold before, but no one else has probably brought any of these other <clears throat> solutions to the table. So what do you think about throwing those two ideas at them? No, I definitely would. Uh, just from your advice and going through this, this is very helpful and I do want to use this approach. Perfect. My Let us know concern, how it goes. <laughs> yeah, my only concern, Chris, though, is that um, the market that the home is in, Albuquerque, New Mexico, the, the, the home is, I guess I would consider like a luxury home within the, the city. And so, um, I've just never done a deal. I've always done deals that are, you know, moderately priced homes. Um, so this will be a, a new adventure for me to embark on. Um, See, that's why I, I think it's I'm a niche about for it. you. Because being in kind of that more expensive area that usually makes people uncomfortable, you know, doing deals there is the reason why you need to. Because... Yes. You know, it's always doing what others aren't willing to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're looking for, you're looking for buyers like me. You know, the house that you see here, I did creative financing on. Mm -hmm. You're looking for people like me that 
understand or they don't want, if you sell or finance it, maybe they, you could sell or finance it back out. They don't want it on their credit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons people, from a lease option point of view, you could have doctors that just can't go to the bank. Mm -hmm. You could have people that make good salaries, but it's a small group of people. I agree. And usually when you get to the creative financing stuff, nobody ever helps those people. So although it may be a smaller pool of buyers, you only need one. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always said that to myself, it just, it's that one house or it's that one buyer that I'm looking for. I'm not trying to look for everybody. So throw it out there. And the good thing I is- I have a if buyer you... in mind already um, that, did a, that actually did a flip in the same area. So that's what's gi giving me the confidence to move forward with this deal. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, keep us posted and thanks for sending in your deal. Thank you. All right. So Milton's deal is 126 South Jefferson Street in Petersburg, Virginia. <clears throat> it's a vacant house since 2013. No one lives there. The homeowner believes that the property is not a teardown. But if you look at the online photos, you would think otherwise. When I asked about it being a teardown, they stated the following. Most of Petersburg is in the historic district. The house is in the National Register of Historic Properties. You can move the building to another location. You can renovate, restore, no demolition. Seller also stated the following. It needs to have plumbing, fixtures, appliances, floor sanding, and paint, including painting the metal roof. I'm asking 15,000 as is. Based on REI Pro, the value is estimated at 112,000, with a range being between 70,000 and 154,000. Within PropStream, it states 51,997 is the value. Should I go for it? They don't want to let it go for any lower. I tried to negotiate. All right, this is going to be a good one. Um, let me pull this property up real quick. Um, so yes, I did look at the pictures on this one and uh, yeah, from the outside, yes, it does appear that way. I can assure you this house cannot be moved. Um, there's no way that this could. Do you know about what the repairs would be on this? Have you gone in and actually seen the house? No, I haven't. Because that could tell you know, some of these older homes, they're actually built better um, than a lot of newer homes. So, you know, it's amazing the stand, uh, these things just stay up forever, but it also could be concerning because we need to obviously address the issues. Um, so one thing that I wanted to, to kind of go over, and I think which is important, I think you're asking this question as well, is really the comps on here. So when I went through these comps and looking at the picture and trying to, trying to compare, and this is just hard to compare um, because it just honestly hasn't been that much activity going on, but there's some good news with this one, okay? So the very first thing that I wanna look at is comp A. And the very first number I always look at is the square, is the square footage. And as you can see, this square footage is a lot bigger than our subject property up here. And this is the, a good reason why I would not take this as a comp. Okay. Let's look at comp B. This particular property sold for 50 grand. This property right here, I looked it up. It's, it was a distressed sale. Um, and that is 2364. Then I get down to C. This property sold for $225,000 November of last year, okay? Now, when I look at the square footage, it's almost identical. And so when I do comps, I really start looking at the square footage. Um, it's like the first thing, because the problem is if you take comps that are smaller square footage, the cost per square foot sold, this column here is always gonna be higher. The houses that have a larger footprint, those that cost per square foot is always gonna be lower. And what we're trying to do in real estate is trying to find that, where's that middle of the road um, number there. So if I took a low one, I'd have to take a high one. 
But like in comp B, I can't even use the comp because it's a distressed comp. I only like to take comps of houses that here's what it would be worth in tip top shape. And that house clearly was not. If we go to D, that house is over 3,400 square feet. I really can't take that comp. Now, if I go to E, that comp is much closer to this particular property. And when you look at the cost per square foot sold, 121 and 127, you could see that there's, that's pretty close. But if I take a square footage like this one that sold for 225, which is much bigger, it's only 72. And that's the reason why you can't take properties that are so much smaller, so much bigger. You tr really try to blend the two together, which is going to give me a more accurate ARV. Now, these are actual properties that have sold. And if you even just look at the sales price, okay, I'm just, I'm kind of walking through this with you because I want everybody to understand. If you look at these sales prices here, 225 50 225 182 224 72 and as we start to get in smaller and further away it could be a different uh, neighborhood and so forth to me it really does feel like this property and location could actually sell for that amount to me that would be more of an accurate value on the property now we always give estimated values i'm gonna jump out of this um this 112 that number is also being affected by some of the distressed sales that are in the area as well, especially like the $50,000 sale that really lowers, and it was a much bigger property at 50,000. It's gonna lower the values until somebody comes in and actually you know, builds something nice and sells it for the 225, that's more in that 2,000 square foot. Now the property values start to to increase. So again, these are estimated values. Understand that you mentioned PropStream said it was like 50 something. Um, that's not even close to what this house is worth. Um, I wouldn't say the 112 is close because you have to actually run the comps on this. So due to these distressed sales that are going on, it's actually lowering everyone's estimated value until someone actually pulls up these properties. And one of those comps that I actually pulled up, I went and saw the pictures of, was actually um, pretty nice. Um, one thing that I, you gotta do, if this house is in a historic area, you need to find out what you can do from a remodeling standpoint and what you can't do. Um, that could really affect the the numbers on here, but keep in mind, they're asking 15,000. So what did you want to do with this property? Uh, probably wholesale it. Even if you put it under for under contract for number one, I'd want to go see it, go see it and take pictures and really understand, you know, a, a better idea of what the costs are going to be. Because if I had those numbers right now, we'd just be throwing numbers, and hope they stick. Um, but 15,000, you could maybe try to sell it for 20,000 um, to someone that's actually looking. But I would really want to understand what the do's and don'ts are with this historic area if it is deed, in fact, in the historic area. Okay. Does that help? I know yeah, we can't really go does. through the whole thing, but we don't really know what we have in front of us. I did see the the outside <laughs> looks looks pretty rough, but you know, sometimes it's like when I go into house, I always tell Bo, you know, when I go into house, I want to smell cat urine, you know, because to <laughs> me, that's a better deal. And if they're, they're almost giving it away, this house, I, I don't see how they can even move it. Doesn't it have, um, it's either concrete blocks go up about four or five feet or something on this, or is it brick? I couldn't tell in the picture. Yeah, I think it's concrete. They're not moving this house. And if the owner actually feels that it could be renovated, not tore down, it may take somebody with deep pockets, but keep in mind, some of these comps are showing this to be worth. He understands, I think the seller understands that it's gonna take a lot of money. And to him, it's just like, I just wanna get rid of this thing. 
it's going to take someone that's got deep pockets and, but it could actually turn out to be a money maker. And the only other concern with this property, when you think about wholesaling is the length of time it's going to take that investor to rehab it. The cops will support the sale, but we don't know the cost of rehab. Is the rehab 200,000 or is it a hundred thousand? And I think that's what, you know, you going to the property, taking pictures and trying to maybe get a better feel for that is going to help you um, go through that. Now, once you have that, all you got to do is just go down to step four and fill this out. So if I went and said that property is worth 220 and I'm just based on what I've seen out there, just doing some basic research. If I said that property needed a hundred thousand in repairs. Now I'm down to 56. Well, what happens if it needed 150,000 in repairs? Uh Oh, now we don't even have a deal. So somewhere between that 100, 150 is going to be the breaking point in repairs. And again, without seeing the property, I think you would need to do that. So hopefully okay. there's some tips on that. Yeah, definitely. Is. I appreciate it. One more question for you. Do, do I, so if I lock it up, what's the best way to kind of like market the property? Is it like Craigslist, Facebook groups, all that stuff or? Yeah. Uh, can you put a, I'd put a sign in the front yard if you can. Okay. You know, a lot of times the owner will be gone um, a sign because usually investors that are looking to buy in very specific areas, they're going to be driving those areas. Um, but definitely local Facebook group. Um, if you put on Zillow or Craigslist, anything like that, I don't think we have to go there's not like a hundred ways to sell this house. It's like, there's only a few really good solid ways to do it. I think those, those are all good there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks for sending that in. Yes, sir. I believe Anthony chatted in and said he had an emergency. So he had to jump off hoping that there would be a replay. So, um, Oh, we can go through this one. Yep. Okay. All right, so Anthony, it's 1636 Southeast Miller Street, uh, Portland, Oregon. After going over the ARV via my REI Pro, the comp showed it was based close to the exact comparable property. The ARV was close to 745,000. After doing the numbers and even at a 70% discount, the property would be at 521,000. The property needs close to 80,000 in repairs. I've got the property under contract for $425,000. I'm looking to assign the deal for $10,000. After walkthrough with my buyers, none seem to have the cash flow or request, or they're requesting an even greater discount for this property. But I know it's a very hot area where the rent is going for an upwards of $2,300 to $2,900 per month. I'm hoping that this software isn't inaccurate because I've had a few investors saying that the ARV is more in the $600,000 range. Is that so that they can get more of a discount on the property? The closing is in seven to 10 days. Should I abort mission? Um, so this one actually took me a little bit of time, Anthony, because I actually, to me, I think the more experienced investor is going to understand this deal much better. Um, and, and I only say that because I do agree with the simple fact that I think this is actually an upcoming area. And I want to give you some, let me pull the property up first. And this is always the name of the game, right? Is investors trying to find that next hot area. And, and you hear me say a lot of times, Bo, that, uh, you know, usually I stay away wherever the hot area is. I just go mm -hmm. in the opposite direction. <laughs> um, but uh, all right, let's, let's pull this property up here. And the first thing that I want to do is pull the comps because, so we have investors saying that, they feel that it's overpriced. Now, again, I'm not familiar with the area. Um, all I'm doing is just doing basic research. And let me kind of share with you some of the things that I see. And this is great for everyone. I mean, just look at the first comp, you know, 1.2 million, 744, 385, 825, 705, 800. These are the closest properties to this. So, for an investor to say, I think that the value should be lower. Well, these comps don't support necessarily a lower sales price. Now like this 385, this property was actually 
distressed. I'm going to pull this up. And if you guys don't know, if you see this little forward link, it'll actually take you online. So this property here is the one that sold for 385. Okay. Obviously it needs a paint job. Um, can you guys see that? Yeah. Um, that's Bo's car right there. <laughs> Do you know that? Um, so that was just one of the properties. I go back, it just tap, uh, goes into a new tab here. I actually selected a very good comp. I want to show you guys this picture. This is a beautiful, beautiful house. Um, where did I get the picture? I think it was on realtor.com. So as you can see, I mean, this house was completely renovated and it sold for um, 799,000. Now there are some areas where when you get to this street, it's just a different street, right? And that could, that could lower the values. So when we start looking at, you know, what is really the value of these properties? I really, again, go, gonna go back to, it, it appears to me that these new sales of people that are coming into this market, they're fixing up these beautiful houses, right? But the problem is you still have all these older sales that are affecting values from, from a big picture point of view. Um, I, I can't argue that this house sold for $800,000 and it's in beautiful shape. It just simply did. Um, comp A, I can't take. Um, that wasn't, I looked at that property. It's not even comparable. Um, but as you start looking at these properties here, I picked this one that has a very similar square footage. It is a little bit less than that. And again, I took another one um, that is fairly close to this one. And you can see that cost per square foot actually jumped down. Um, I think those are the only two I could actually pull because I really do believe that this is, again, in an area that is probably upcoming, like you said. Um, these are signs for that. Um, so what do we do? So the very first thing is you're closing in seven to 10 days. The very first thing that I would do is see if we can get an extension, number one. And then number two, I would see if the seller would take less on this property. Um, because if the average investor is not really picking up on these very specific individual properties that like usually investors don't even realize that that area is even booming until they already see other investors that put money into it. And next thing you know, things start to turn. And we're trying to find, you know, when, when, when is that right time to do that? And maybe right now is the time in this particular area. So hopefully those tips help. And uh, Anthony, and uh, thanks for sending in the deal there. Leslie is on. I will allow to talk. It's 3661 Adams Street in Gary, Indiana. Asking price, $30,000. Oh, no. Needs fifteen to twenty thousand in repairs to get it to a retail price, or ten to fifteen to fix it up as a rental. Well, you know what's amazing? I always say you put a lot of information, but I can actually take this and uh, just this limited amount of information actually analyze this deal. So let's go ahead and pull this property up because um, there's definitely some things I want to point out on this one. All right, so the very first thing, let's pull these comps up. Now, I did some research on this, this property here, and here's what I found out with just basic notes here. Um, and, and the reason why I say these, comp A is average condition. I literally went online, you click that little button right there, and try to find, you know, what was this house, what condition was the house in by looking at pictures. Um, Number C, this house was in pristine condition. So that's, again, probably reflecting the actual price on there. And then I go to comp E. And again, this was, I would consider average condition. Um, so what I want to do is actually get through the cash offer on this one. All right, so... This is really important to tell people is I go and I fill this cash offer out. 
okay? And I'm not sure if you're looking to actually purchase this um, and then as a flip or a rental, but I always want you to look at it from a flip point of view because I hear a lot of investors, what they'll do, Bo, is they'll go, okay, if we only put 10 grand in the property, we could just rent it out. The problem with just saying it that simple is that someday, one day in the future, you're gonna sell that property. So if I rent it out for three years, I'm gonna to have to go back in three years and fix it back up. Put more money in it. So you're putting money up front to get it rented, right? In rentable condition. And then at the end of it, you're probably fixing it up again or you're selling it at a discount. So just keep that in mind. So when I go into these types of deals, no matter if I'm gonna rent the property out or not, I always assume that I'm gonna sell it based on a numbers point of view. And I think that's important to analyze your deal. And guess what? If I calculate, hey, I'm gonna put 20 grand in repairs in this and I only end up putting 10, great. You got 10 extra grand in your pocket. But I always go and just assume that I'm gonna do that. So we ran the ARV, put in the expenses. And what I would recommend, Leslie, is to, to fine tune maybe the closing costs and those things. And if you buy it, there's no re wholesaler in this. If you were to wholesale it, again, we would need to add that in there. Now, once I calculated that, I come down to a cash offer of 24.9. Now, keep in mind, that's only 30, that's 37% of the ARV. That's why, again, you can't go in and, not you, but people can't go in and say, I'll give you 70%. You can't do that. It doesn't even make sense for people to even say that. Now, again, if, if my maximum is 24.9, based on if all these numbers were true, then I would want to start a little bit less than that. So just keep that in mind. Then what I do is I take this property and I run it through deal pro. So step four to me is what could I buy it for? And then I take the deal analysis. Um, we're going to do the purchase rent here and analyze this deal. I've already filled in the numbers um, just for time's sake. Um, you can see here with those exact numbers, I would profit annual cash flow 7,500 bucks. And this is assuming I did put in, you know, just a hundred dollars of operating expense, you know, something, something's going to go wrong, right? You might want to put in a little bit more than that, but, um, it's only a $7,000 profit. Now, if I change my exit strategy and I purchase this and I sell or finance it, I'm going to go back in and readjust these numbers. You're going to see that I can make 41,000 on this property. Again, within this, this time frame that I put in here and I would recommend go through the replay. So um, you can go through this. And then the last analysis is if I purchased it and then I did a lease option on this. So taking the left-hand side numbers aren't going to change. The right-hand side numbers will change. And you can make a $33,000 profit right there. And that would be within the 12 months, assuming that the buyer ended up buying the property. If they don't, then you could extend it. You could do it again, find a new buyer, put more money down. And again, those profits would then go higher than that. So, um, and again, fine tune these numbers. Um, again, it just you got to fine tune them. Um, but if you sell or finance this property, that's a whole different situation now. So we look at it from buying it. Well, maybe you acquire it through a seller finance. And I think that is a whole different analysis you'll have to run through at a different time, but uh, keep that option open because that's gonna be another way to, to really profit from this deal. And um, I think you could, you're, Obviously, I don't know what the actual uh, the seller's asking 30 grand on this thing, but run the different scenarios. I think you have a lot of different angles to this. And that's kind of the great thing is when you understand multiple strategies is to be able to bring this to the table of the seller and then use Deal Pro to analyze so many different ways that you could get out of the deal. Um, so hopefully there's some good tips there for you. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Next one. 
Jahari. Let's see if Jahari is on. Yep. And allowing to talk. Now we're at 609 Tottenham Court, Patterson, California. So this property has been on the market for a while. I'm working with a listing realtor for this property, not the owner. There was a previous renter there for about 25 years. They moved and the place was upgraded to a lot newer flooring, cabinets, countertops, paint, new dishwasher. There are no major repairs that need to be done, just some landscaping in the backyard. It is a three bedroom, two bath. They're asking 349,000. She said they have not been able to sell yet, had one offer, but the person backed out. She said that the owner is thinking about lowering the price to sell it. She also stated that there have that they've done lease purchases in the past, but not in a long time. She said that they might be willing to do one again, but she has to run it by her broker and the owner. She said in the past it was difficult because of monthly credits. I told her no credits to make it easier. I sent her an offer yesterday. I'm waiting to hear back. Sales price of 327,000, down payment of 3,000, monthly payment 1100, term 12 months. Monthly credit zero for a total monthly payments for 12 months of 13,200. Total monthly credits none. Balance at the end of the 12 months will be 324,000. Total payments received was $340,200. Any advice? Oh yes. <laughs> for sure. So is it Jahari? Is that yeah, you're pronouncing Jahari. your name right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna you, you did a really good job actually on this. Um Thank you. I, I'm proud of you for explaining it that way because that definitely helps me. But I'm gonna give you let, let's go through um the numbers that you that you actually ran, right? So oh, this one here. And I'm going to scroll down and get to the offer section. So here's the exact offer I believe that you had made. Is that correct? Yes. 327, three down, 1100 a month. Now, if they take that deal, it's still a good deal. Okay? okay. But I want to show you something that could totally change this. And if I go back up into Deal Pro, Now, I put your numbers in here as well. Now, if you're not going to really make much, um, you're not going to stay in the middle of this deal on a lease option. It's kind of your only profit center is really going to be through the down payment. Um, so I was actually going to try to obtain this for myself. Say that again? And then I, I was actually going to think obtain it for myself, and then I was thinking – maybe at the end of the lease or towards the end of the lease, I could possibly extend the lease. And then if I wanted to like put it on a, a lease option or something like that. If, if you're looking at it for your own personal property, yeah. if they take that offer, that's a good deal. Okay. Hands down. Okay. Um, let's say that you don't though real quick. Cause I want to right. show you something. Yeah. yeah. Real, I was that's pretty say, cool. But yeah. <laughs> so okay. keep in mind, there's a real tour involved on this. Right. So keep that in mind. If you stay, if I could get maybe that seller to go maybe 24 months instead of the 12 months, number one. Right, right. Okay. I could pay you a little bit more. Okay. So if you let me go a little bit longer, I'll pay you a little bit more. And that, I'm going to keep the down and the monthly because, man, if you get those two, that would be That'd be a great deal. Right, now right. this little slider bar over here, I'm going to take that off as meaning that yes, I'm going to stay in the middle where before um, I, I didn't know exactly you were going to live in it, but if you're going to live in it, then follow those numbers. Cause I thought they looked good. Okay. I'm going to turn around and sell this property staying in the middle for three fifty. Okay. I think we can get 10 down and we're going to change that rental rate to the 1700, which woo which is actually more accurate for this particular property. And I'm only going to go 12 months with them. You could turn. So if you weren't going to stay in the middle, it was going to be a $7,000 profit. Um, if you stay in the middle, you could actually make a $22,000 profit on this property. But if you're going to live in the house, then I would go back to your original offer. I thought that looked good. 
Okay, okay. And, so and here's, the, oh. here's, the, here's the question that's going to come up, though, is how, how does the realtor get paid in this transaction? That was my next question. Well, here's the good thing. When you make the offer and you're going to go live in it, who cares? That's right. between you and the seller, <laughs> right? I mean, at the end of the right, day, right. the seller yeah. pays the commission. But right, let, me right. give you, let me give you a couple of things that could happen here. Number one, if you bought the house within that time frame, the realtor could get the commission once it's sold. Okay. Right. So that's one way for the realtor to get paid. I think that they will probably take a much reduced um, commission on this, or they actually may just say, Hey, how about if we manage it for you to the seller and they take half of your deposit and then get maybe eight to 10% per month on the rent. Maybe the seller goes for that, but that's really up to the seller, right? That's how they, between the negotiation between them. It has right? nothing oh, to do with you. You make the offer and say, this is what I can do. Uh, other okay. than that, that's all you can do. So Okay, so if I was gonna lease option it to someone else, how would the commissions work for the realtor that, in that? Exact same way. Oh, exact same way. You they would only get the commission from the seller. That's right. Question. That is correct. So again, it's between the seller and the listing agent on here. Um, I would imagine that, you know, they're probably getting frustrated right now of right. trying to sell this property. And I think number one, if you move in it, then, you know, that's one thing. I think they really need to seriously think about your offer. What I thought was low, but good for you was the actual monthly payment at 1100. Right, right. So if they take that or they may come back and say, Hey, we'll do 1300 or Hey, they could say we need 1500. Right. Right. Still, that would be fairly good deal. Yeah, you yeah, went yeah. in low mm -hmm. and let them come up. It gives them something to talk about too. So keep that in mind. Right. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks for sending, sending the deal in too. All right. You're welcome. All right. So here's Rico's deal. I just got my first contract signed for a seller financed opportunity. The owner is asking a hundred thousand for the property with ten thousand down. I offered him two thousand down, but he wouldn't accept it. He isn't budging on the ten thousand down. He inherited the property three years ago. He's an absentee owner. I told him that I could pay him four hundred fifty dollars a month for five years. Zillow has a rental estimate of thirteen twenty five. We didn't discuss the interest rate but I estimated around 4% to get the monthly around $450 based on the price. It's an all brick home with three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square feet. A local realtor says 130 to 135,000 would be a good listing price for a lease option or a seller finance. I haven't been on the inspection to view the property yet. The owner says the property is move in condition, but needs cosmetic and updating. Should I market the property as a lease option or seller finance? And what should be the listing price? So Rico, did you actually put it under contract? To unmute yourself there. And if you're not able to talk or don't okay. have a mic, there you are. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, yeah, yeah, he just recently signed the contract. Now you haven't seen the property yet. Not yet. I'm I'm supposed to go see it next week. I mean, based on the numbers, it it already looks good. So that's a good sign. Uh, usually, I like to go look at them first, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Um, so I actually did yours old school way um, of analyzing this deal. I actually did it all in PowerPoint. This is how I do it live um, at, at an event that we do, and I I think it's another way of looking how we structure numbers outside of just getting into the software. Um, so Bo, let's, uh, so what I always do is I said, okay, let's, let's break this down, um, in a way that between the seller and you. So sales price was a hundred thousand, 10,000 down, which wasn't negotiable. You said around 4% interest rate. We're just going to even out the monthly payment. Let's just assume that that was the payment. It obviously tax insurance is probably going to affect that. And then a term of five years on here. Now let's look at if we lease optioned it out. So if I put it up at 130, which if the realtor said between 130, 135, I'm gonna go with the lower number, um, 10,000 down. If you can get more down, 
I would. I would just think this is a good down payment for that. But if you can get more, get more because as you can see, you're putting 10 grand down just to buy the place. Monthly payments, 1350. We'll do a term of 12 months. We'll go to the next slide. So your first profit center is the difference in down payment. Okay. And if I pay 10 grand to buy the property, again, there'll be closing costs and so forth. But if I only collect 10, I'm not going to make any money. The second profit center was the difference in monthly rent. So you're paying around the 450, you're receiving 1325, that's $875 a month profit. And then the third profit center is gonna be kind of more your bigger payday. Um, in this example is the balance between what you owe and the balance of what the new buyer needs to pay you, okay? So in your deal, I had to amortize it because you did a seller finance because your balance is gonna come down. It doesn't come down that much within 12 months, but it does come down a little bit. So your balance was 88.5 after 12 months. So this is assuming you lease option it out and your buyer goes and gets a bank loan to cash you out and be done with the property. Now the new buyer's balance is gonna be 120. So remember they were buying it um, for the 120, they're putting 10 down, they owe 120 on this. So you still didn't make any money on the down payment, but your monthly payment, you made 10,500 over the course of 12 months. And then a 31.5 on the difference in sales price. Again, there'll be some closing cost in, in both those transactions. Um, that gives you a total profit of $42,000 on this deal. So um, even though you haven't seen the property, hopefully it's in <laughs> fairly good shape. Um, but uh, um, I, that's kind of how I break it down old school um, on here. So people can kind of see how it flows a little bit different. Um, you'll probably have to fine tune some of the numbers to be a little more exact. Um, but to keep it general, I would say that that was a good deal. And here's the other thing. If you put 10 grand down, let's just assume that the property's in good shape, right? So you put 10 grand down. If you get the 10 grand back, you've already made all your money back, right? Outside of maybe yeah. closing costs and so forth. So you really don't have much money actually invested in this property. Now, if you go to the property and you find out it needs 20 grand in repairs for someone to live there, then obviously these numbers are gonna change. Okay. Hopefully that helped break it down, but um, definitely go look at the property and see what see what you have in front of you. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Thanks, Rico. Man. This one's easy. All yeah. right. Let me let me pull the property up. The uh, first thing I want to do is go to the comps. What is the exit strategy on this? What do you want to do with it? Leslie, what do you want to do with this property? You there? Hello? You there, Leslie? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Sorry, I was trying to type it in. Um, oh. I was hoping to uh, maybe put a little money into it and then uh, do a, you know, be the bank, sell it with seller financing. Are you thinking down the lines I was thinking then? All right. So some of these comps that I pulled here, um, and, and I think these are fairly good comps. I didn't really, I pulled one high comp and one low comp. And what I mean by that is, price or uh, cost per square foot. Um, so I pull one high, try to find that kind of that middle area on this. And um, let me go to the actual offer. I put in 84,000. I thought 84 was a good comp um, or a good ARV on this particular property. Um, how are you feeling about that number? I was thinking 55 to 65 for, for that area, but. Is it a street thing? Cause I know something, if I go pull, let me pull the comps. Cause sometimes 
You know, that's the great thing about knowing your area too, because <laughs> it could change very quickly. The one thing that I notice, and I know there, there's only so many comps over here to begin with, right? So this first comp was in Selma, but the properties in Muncie, but these are fairly close together. Is it, is it really a different area? Well, it's considered Selma area. People refer to that area as Selma, but it's a Muncie address. Oh, okay. Now between these two neighborhoods, is it different from over here to where some of these comps are over there to up on the, those, looks comp, like, or the those comps to the right, I think it's a little nicer over there. A little nicer. Yeah. There, there's some, uh, manufactured homes, a couple mobile homes over in this area by, by Sheffield. So it's a mixture of different types of properties in here. Yes, yes. And that could definitely skew the comps. Um, and that's, that's the great thing about understanding your marketplace. So let's, let's take that in consideration in the offer now and not necessarily. So do you think it could go for 60? Yes. And you said only 7,000 in repairs? Yes. Uh, I, an investor had it and uh, they were selling it lease option and the person didn't exercise their option. They moved out, but it's mostly cosmetic and um, it's just so far away. It's like two and a half to three hours away from, from where that investor lives and it's out of sight, out of mind. It's just sitting there. Okay, so I'm going to take the wholesaler. I didn't know exactly what you wanted to do with it because you're not going to have that, which is getting a little bit closer to what they're asking. Um, and again, you could probably adjust some of these numbers based on your local knowledge and what things cost. Number one, you may or may not even use a realtor, which will definitely get you into that same ballpark. So I think we're close on this. And then if I turn that around and... We're going to actually buy this and sell or finance it, right? Yes. I'm just typing in some of the numbers. Again, you'd, you'd be able to fine tune this. I'm going to just say one month on there if it's just that. You know about the insurance? Um, maybe 50 a month. It'll be a lot less. Remember what the taxes were on this? Less than a thousand yearly. We'll go high just in case, right? And then if we sell or finance this property back out, um, oops. You know, I did that earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, I should have saved. That's why you save it, right? Always click out of that box. I'll put a little buffer in there. Again, adjust these numbers. All right, so if we if you sold it seller, here's the good thing about selling it seller finance is that you can almost justify your price because they can't go to the bank. And when we're talking about a property that's in this particular price range, I love seller financing because number one, it's gonna be hard for a bank to even loan money on this kind of dollar amount uh, for a buyer. That's probably why the lease option fell through in this particular case. So I do like the, the seller finance um, exit strategy here. All right, let's just plug in that 60. Um, we'll do 60. How much down do you think you could get? Uh, I would try to get between five and 10. 
Let's go low, just just to go low. Uh, right. Interest rate in mine? Uh, 9%, 30 year, seven balloon, seven year balloon. That's a good thing with some of these lower price properties. You go high on the interest rate because um, the rental rate um, is going to be much better than the mortgage actual rate um, at a low mortgage amount. So we'll amortize that and then do a balloon. I'm just carrying these numbers over. And again, you could adjust these um, all said and done. I better save that before something happens. Again, we're going to be close to, I mean, a really good profit. I mean, it's, I mean, the profit margin on when you do seller finance for a long term like this is like worth sometimes more than what you paid for it. In this case, you know, you got 104%. I mean, that, that's what I love about seller financing is now they're going to take care of the maintenance cost and repairs on this, which is great because you shouldn't have to worry about that when you sell or finance it. Now, if you rented it out, of course, you would get those calls, right? So I, I, I think the whole route you're going is great. Um, just watch that asking price, maybe tweak some of the all cash numbers. Because when I first ran those comps and looked at 84, I was like, well, that's a no brainer. Uh, but now that you're kind of clarifying some of the area and giving me a better feel um, because again, it, it was like a cul-de-sac type of area. So there really wasn't any comps right there. So it's always hard to kind of gauge the exact value on properties like that. And understanding your local area is super important. Um, so thanks for submitting that deal. Hopefully there's a couple of things, uh, even if it's confirmation that you're doing the right thing is, is a good tip, right? So yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely. Well, I think right. that's a wrap. Well, thank you guys so much for attending. I hope you learned a lot. Please spread the word uh, about what we're doing here and being a part of this. And uh, we would truly appreciate that. Um, if we get more support from the deal analysis, uh, we will continually uh, do those. You guys have a wonderful Friday. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon.